Hello everybody, welcome. I'm back here in the studio. I've got quite a few more pots I need to um, to glaze, but uh, somebody wrote to me recently, and I think I mentioned this the other day, that we were, I wanted to talk about what is involved in becoming a full-time potter, because I know there are a lot of people who contemplate maybe giving up their jobs, or they're leaving college, or leaving, you know, they're starting out their their, their, their career, or wanting to start out a career, or wondering whether they, they can. And, uh, and they were asking me, you know, maybe I could say something about that. Well, um, it's kind of, could be a big topic, if you know what I mean. And I don't want to, didn't really want to make it into a big topic, but it might, it might take, it might take a little while, um, or it might be worthwhile um, spending a little time talking about um, what is what is involved in becoming a full-time potter. Well, I am a full-time potter myself, and I, I suppose I, in my case, I, I started I started working for my father. That was David Leach in 1979, in the January, um, and uh, for me it was like a job. It was my I had to start work, you know. So that that's slightly different. That that was like I was working for somebody else. I had to turn up, be there at half past eight in the morning, and uh, present myself fit and ready to work till five thirty six o'clock in, in the evening. And that was it. I didn't have to think anything more about it. I just had to be there, do as I was told, make whatever I had to do, or, or pack or unpack, glaze or whatever, and and that was the end of the day. Um, when I left uh, working for my father in 1984, like five years later, I I thought, oh my goodness me. I've got to. I've got to start thinking for myself. <laughs> this is the problem. <laughs> Do I have a brain? Well, um, if you spend a, been spending a lot of time being told what to do by somebody else, uh, one of the things you come up against when you when you think about what, going out on your own and, and making a go of it, you, you you suddenly have got all this freedom in front of you. Um, and so you have to think a little bit, a little bit carefully, uh, what you're going to make, and what are you going to, uh, and where are you going to sell it? Uh, these suddenly become crunch questions because it's all very well being told what to do, just turning up for work. You don't really have to think. You don't have to think beyond the job at hand at that particular moment. So. Um, So yeah, so I, I I I rented first. The first thing you need to do, really, I mean, I mean first let me say, uh, yes, go for it. If you if you think if you think that you've you're confident enough, you know, you do need a certain amount of confidence uh, in yourself and your own ability to make pots. So get real with yourself and. Ask yourself, have I got what it takes in terms of the skill level uh, to be able to m earn a living from from making humble pieces of pottery, you know? So that's the first question I would say you need to ask yourself. Um, in my case, when I left, when I left my, my father's studio, I've been there for five years, so I was, I did have the ability to produce pots repeat wear in consider with, with some with some speed. Um, again, you need to ask yourself: Well, what kind of pots am I going to make? Uh, am I, what kind? You know. Well, let me ask you: What kind of potter are you? Are you a, an art potter? Are you a potter that just likes to make individual pieces? 
Or are you a repeat thrower? Can you repeat throw? Can you make pots in quantity uh, to a gauge, to a set height and a set width? So th 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 I ask you that question. Are you, what kind of potter are you? Now, if you're, if you're a, a, an art, an art, let's call it an art potter or a potter that tends to uh, make more individual pieces, um, you need to bear in mind that those kind of pieces, that that kind of work is, is generally because of the nature of it and because it's a more of a one-off type of pot, that kind of work always tends to sell for much more money. So you immediately, by making that kind of work, you're pricing yourself out of the general marketplace, if you see what I mean. Because um, not everybody necessarily is going to have $150 or £150 or 150 euros in their pocket spare to be able to just to say, oh yeah, hmm, yeah, nice piece, yeah, we'll have that. 150 150 whatever. Uh, not, ev not everybody's going to have that kind of money. So think carefully. That kind of, uh, those kind of pots are not so easy to sell. And I, I would recommend against going out on, on your own, starting off just making kind of art pots. Really to be a, a viable concern, you know, uh, from a business point of view, you need to be able to put pots in the hands of the common people. And that generally means functional pots, pots that people can use. And if they break them, it isn't the end of the world, they can go and buy another one and it isn't going to break their little bank isn't going to break their piggy bank. They can, they can, they're going to be able to afford it. So I mean, I would, I would, I would recommend anybody who's kind of leaving college and contemplating setting up, avoid trying to make the arty pots for a start. Discipline yourself to make pots that are functional and pots that are beautiful. If you can try and combine beauty with function, um, you're, you're onto a good thing. And, and if you can get your prices right, uh, then that's the way to go. And this is what I did, you know, when I, I left my dad's and I thought, whoa, suddenly I had all this freedom um, to to make whatever I wanted. So I, I, I decided what I was going to do. Well, I thought, right, well, hang on. We've got to get a bit real here, get a bit get practical. I need to 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 put the kind of these kind of pots into the, the hands of these people. So what kind of pots do we need? So we need things that people can use. So drinking vessels, pouring vessels, vessels to put hot food in, Vessels that you can eat off, i.e. plates, pitchers, uh, vases, vases for putting pl flowers in. It's things that you can use in the kitchen, like pestles and mortars. Um, these are the these are the these are the kinds of things that you need to think about making, and you need to be able to to repeat throw these things uh, and get up to speed. Because if you're if you can only make you know ten pots a day or fifteen pots a day, you that isn't enough. You know, um, I can generally, if I'm up to speed, uh, I can probably make thirty GP bowls in an hour. All right, so you, that's, that's the sort of thing you should be aiming to be able to make something like mugs. You should be able to rattle them off at in the order of, all right, maybe 30 is a bit ambitious, you might think, but, you know, we'll try for 20, you know. Um, so get going uh, with these repeat items. 
Um, I've written a few things down here just for... <laughs> I haven't looked at it once yet. But anyway, becoming a full-time potter. Uh, to pot or not to pot? Aha. Uh -huh. Is it possible to survive? Yes, if you are determined. And I've just written down some other bits and pieces here. Things to realistically consider. Does one have the ability? What is one's skill level? Can one throw competently? It's always a good idea. Go visit a professional potter and ask to go into their studio and just watch them for half an hour and see how they work. Uh, have you got the determination? Prepare for frugality. Um, because you're going to be making the, the transition from being a hobby potter basically to being a, a professional potter. Um, one of the things that you're going to need and what we all, we, all, we all have a problem with and that is, I certainly do, and that is self-discipline, you know, is getting yourself into the studio because it's so easy to be distracted doing other things which you think need doing but you actually, what you have to be doing, you have to get into the studio and start producing pots. You've got to, you've got to put time on the wheel because that's, that's where it begins, on the wheel. Um, so you know you need to think about that. You know, have you got the have you got the the, the self discipline there? Um, I wrote here. Oh yeah, do you have the studio? Do you have you got the studio space and the equipment? Because that's something you're going to need, of course. Being an artist might make the self discipline aspect rather irksome. And we as artists tend to, to, to be operating a lot out of, out, out of our emotions and our, our, how we feel. And, um, you know, that, that's, we, we have to, um, we can't afford to be led like that. Another thing I've got written here, what are you trying to sell and do they want it? Are your pots good? or good enough. That is an important consideration. Where do you plan to sell your work? You see, you, got to, you, you have to sort of think in your mind, well, who is going to buy these pots that I make? I, may, I might think they're beautiful, but I've got to convince the, the people out there and out there that they're beautiful as well, and that they need them. So, you, you've got to start believing in your own pots that they're worth buying. <laughs> I used to, when I started selling, when I started making, uh, when I left my dad's, I, I, I rented a, a stable for seven pounds a week that had no electricity and no water. So I potted while it was daylight and I brought the water in buckets and I potted on a kick wheel and I had a gas kiln and it was in a very small space but it was my studio it was mine so that's how I started and then what I did was I would load up the car with pots and I thought to myself these pots are handmade pots therefore I've got to take them to the people who are going to appreciate handmade handcrafted items so I don't want to go to the sort of cheap end of town because at the cheap end of town people are not so concerned maybe about handmade they just want to get something for 50 cents 50 pence whatever something cheap and they're not going to worry and maybe they've got a big family and you know they've got pressing needs in other directions so they are they are not going to be all that discerning so you've got to this is a thing, you've got to bring your stuff in front of people that are discerning and that appreciate what you've got. So I thought to myself, well, I was, li I was living in, in the city of Exeter in Devon, England, and the, the, one of the, the, the more upmarket um, uh, parts of this city was a place called Topsham. So I thought, well, I'll head down to Topsham. So I loaded up the car. And I, and, I, and I would just go park up the car and then I would go round the, the streets and I would just knock on people's doors 
and of course that's quite easy in a city because you've got one door then the next door and then the next door they're all you know fairly close to one another so I um, uh, I said I just knocked on the door I said excuse me sorry to bother you uh, you know my name's Simon Leach I'm a local potter uh, and I just w w was wondering if you'd be interested in seeing some of my work now the nature of that kind of selling will mean that there will be a lot of people who will say no thank you very much not tonight thank you bang shut the door okay you've got to expect that so I went then on to the next house and the next and the next and the next and the next and you know I, it, it's, it's quite interesting because when people when people open the door and they will say oh the man will converse with his wife I said some guy, a chap here wants to 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 us to look at some of his handmade pots dear and she and somebody might say oh we'll show him in show him in that's really good if you get if you can get in you know people then you, once you get all your pots unpacked and you put them on the floor and you and you start talking about them um they'll, they'll, people will usually buy something you know they'll buy something um you want to avoid trying to put any pressure on people to buy but it's the nature of that kind of selling that automatically they, they feel obligated, they feel that like they want to and they want to help you, you know, they see that you're a young guy or a young girl and they, they want to give you a hand, you know, and maybe they've got the money so, and they've got the appreciation don't forget they've got the appreciation, you see so they, uh, they will buy a piece and I used to come back sometimes, you know, and I, you know, and I'd, I'd have sold 50 pounds and I'd taken orders for 75 pounds you know just in two or three hours work just going out see this is another thing don't necessarily wait for the people to come to you you go to them um, now I don't know in some in some cultures probably door-to-door -door selling is is not maybe a good idea but you know in England you can you can do that you know if you're polite and you know you, you you're dress up a bit, look a bit smart. So um, so that's what I did. Um, so I mean I, if you bear all these bear bear these things in mind, um, think about what I've said and it, it's by no means <laughs> I've just touched on the subject. But uh, you know you know, think, you need to think soundly, you know, things like, have I got the ability? Have I got the skill? Have I got it in me to do this? Because you, you, you'll you need a, a lot of determination to carry it through and to keep going. And it'll mean, you know, the, the other ways of selling, you know, maybe going to, to markets, uh, take your place, your pots to the places where the right kind of people are. So, it's just a few thoughts that I've thrown out, out in the air. And you know, um, we could um, talk about this uh, at more length, of course. And if anybody's got some useful something useful to share on that subject why don't they why don't people make some comments and chip in because it's actually a very it's a very it's an important uh, subject I think and uh, um, it's somewhere where I've been and I'm still potting and I think to myself I'm not all that, I'm not a really, I mean I am determined, I can be determined, you know, but I'm not a very ambitious kind of person. I, I'm tending, to, I'm really very laid back and, you know, I don't push myself anything like I, I ought to really, but I'm still here. Um, you know, and then you may get a lucky break, you know, and you, you find there's a restaurant that wants 500 soup bowls or something like that. Anyway, Simon Leach saying, keep practicing. <laughs> okay, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.